culture. <laughs> and um, so their settlement was more like um, Spanish, French, Italian, Croatian, Mexican, and Chinese earlier. And then after the, since 1965, um, it's been more home to like Cambodians, um, Vietnamese people and Hong Kong, and then Taiwanese and Chinese and Italian. Um, but it was kind of interesting because when we were there, we didn't hear much of any other language other than Chinese and English. Um, the restaurant we ate at, um, we asked the workers what kind of Chinese, what type of Chinese they spoke, and she said she was fluent in both Mandarin and Cantonese. Ah, it was hard to find people who spoke another language, but we heard some Spanish speak, but that was pretty much it. Um, and Pretty much majority of the businesses around there were like restaurants or gift shops. And um, they, all, they had a fortune teller store, one fortune teller store. And um, it was interesting all these stores weren't like randomly placed, but they were mostly placed in Plaza. So they have something called Adapto Plaza, which is um, almost 100 years old. And that's the oldest building in Chinatown. Uh, we asked about four people, <coughs> and they all said that was the oldest building. And there are like over 20 shops in that plaza alone. Mm. Um, you can see some of the fusion here, like Vietnamese Chinese restaurant versus just Chinese. <coughs> and um, we were looking for a park, and we asked like if there were any green space or parks or playgrounds. And they said that they were. We took pictures of people that we talked to. These two little girls were actually born in Chinatown. Um, yeah, we wrote their names down, but I'm pretty sure it's wrong. <laughs> she, she, it's Chinese names, so yeah. And the, the oh, this is a store that we stopped by to ask questions about the community. Um, the hardest thing that we found was a lot of the business owners um, would say that they just don't know of any issues that are going on in their communities. And we kind of figured it was because they don't <coughs> really want to talk about issues that are affecting them to like strangers. But I think someone told Olivia. Oh, uh, that it would be better. Actually, Paul, would you go back one? Wincho, um, Wincho. But anyway, he was, they were saying that there was a store owner who seemed like kind of 1.5 mm -hmm. generation, and she said she also didn't know about the area. Well, it's okay. Um, 아니, she was, but she was 다시. saying probably not where the commercial area would be where we could actually find out about social issues, um, because a lot of the store owners, they don't really live in the city town do it yourself? necessarily. But at the same time, there are some stores in that central plaza that have been owned for generations, and now like the second and third generations of those families um, take, took over the store. But so um, we asked the question about um, if gentrification is an issue. Um, we asked the question, well, is your kid out of Chinatown because it's too expensive. And they said it was pretty cheap in Chinatown. They said the rent was around $700, $800. And I don't know what the rent is like in LA, but I guess that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty much the answers to all the questions that we had to find out about. Oh, and um, what, I guess, what are the, some community, where can community members receive service? Um, they have a visitor center. It kind of sucks because it was Sunday and they were closed, so we couldn't ask any questions, and we were hoping to find out a lot about it. But um, and uh, they have Chinese Historical Society 
Chinese Consolidated uh, Benevolent Association, Chinese Chamber of Commerce, Chinese American Citizens Alliance, and Chinese Cultural Center. And I think these are just a few major ones that were on the map. And I'm sure they have other organizations, smaller organizations <coughs> that are actually not, that wasn't part of the map. And um, it was really interesting how they had like big poles with pictures and history of that area that the pole, where the pole is at. So for example, like in front of Union, uh, in front of the, uh, the Metro Ch Chinatown Metro Station, they had um, history of how Chinatown started with uh, in writing and in picture, and they had that everywhere. Yeah. Some of the other things is right. the right language there. barrier, though. Like, good thing these were up there because it was really hard to t speak with some of the community members. Like, they would shut off if we just spoke in English. So, um, just cold approaching the street was a lot harder. I think the best response was either when we bought something at a store or when we ate lunch somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's oh, where I'm Jackie Chan <laughs> shot rush hour. <laughs> oh, wait, how do you do oh. that? It says on there. I know. So right next to it is that Chungking Plaza, and like if you watch the movie, I think mm. it's, it's that place. Right there, yeah, right there. Mm. So it, it was kind of amazing how everything was really cheap. Like, um, I found a keychain made out of beads that when I was in Hawaii, I got them for $8, and that was after a discount. But they were selling it for $1. So just the price difference was like, it really shocked me. 저는 그 개인적으로 느낀 것 중에 하나는 잘 몰랐는데 그 차이나타운이 처음에는 원래 유니언 스테이션에 있었는데 유니언 스테이션이 이제 생겨나면서 이제 커뮤니티가 이제 젠트리피케이션해서 다른 지역으로 이제 물러나게 된 거랑 그리고 지금 현재 다운타운에 어바 1.5 마일 스퀘어 차원 스퀘어 그런 피트 정도의 이제 차이나타운이 있는데 그 그, 로스앤젤레스 차이나타운 프로젝트를 이렇게 만들려고, 이렇게 차이나타운을 만들려고, 로스앤젤레스 차이나타운 프로젝트를 했는데, 그래서 돈을 막 모았나봐요. 돈을 모았는데, 당시에 그 중국인들이 땅을 살 수가 없으니까, 그 아이들 이름으로, 아이들 이름으로 땅을 사가지고, 현재 그 차이나타운을 이제 이렇게. 네, 그래서 그, 그 돈으로 아들, 아이들 이름으로 땅을 사서 현재 그 차이나타운을 만들었다고 하는 거 하나가 있었고, 또 하나 느낀 거는, 그 우리가 처음으로 이제 LA 살면서 이렇게 버스라든가 지하철을 많이 못 하게 되는데 그 많은 우리 그 우리 지역 사회 주민분들이 어 우린 보통 이제 어디 갈때 이제 쉽게 차를 타고 차 타는 것도 되게 어렵게 생각하는 게 많이 있는데 뭐 지하철 타고 버스 타면서 많은 엄마 아빠 우리 일하는 워킹 패밀리 그 가족들이 아이들이 아이들 선물을 사기 위해서 지하철 타고 버스 타고 다운타운 가서 물건도 사고 크리스마스 선물도 사는 모습 보면서 어 우리가 평상시에는 이렇게 쉽게 생각하는 이렇게 차 타는 건데 다른 우리 지, 우리 같이 사는 지역 주민들에게는 그렇게 어디 왔다 갔다 하는 게 이렇게 쉽지는 않은 거구나 하는 건좀 많이 느꼈어요. Basically, the two points that stuck out to Gigi today was one was um, on a side we learned that uh, the early Chinese town community really wanted to buy some land and really establish themselves and a space for themselves, but they were barred from buying land at that time due to exclusionary laws. Um, and so what they had to do was wait until their children who were born here, American citizens, <laughs> would be able to buy it in their names. And the oh, other so thing that stuck out, out, stuck out was like taking public transportation yeah. today. You know, it was interesting and fun on one hand, but we realized that, you know, it is, it might not be super convenient for a lot of people who have no other choice but to take public transportation. Um, and then Young pointed out that we were able to also take in some good street, <laughs> street musicians. Yeah, I, I was really shocked because it's, it was my first time actually seeing an